A huge reason I started this channel was because of Bob Ross. While I cannot say I'm a huge fan of his painting, he is a huge inspiration for me when it comes to making painting videos. His soothing voice and calming presence, his step-by-step -step process, making painting accessible and possible for everyone, it is part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel. I don't quite have the hairstyle that matches, but I do enjoy running this channel. So when Netflix released a documentary about Bob Ross, I was very excited to learn more about him. And after watching it, let's just say I have a few thoughts about it. And also, I think it's fitting to share my process of painting this tiny Bob Ross painting in watercolor. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. So Netflix released a documentary, Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal and Greed. And people say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but it's hard not to guess what I was about to see just by reading the title of the documentary. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the documentary itself, but just sharing some of my thoughts as an artist who also sort of run on a media platform. YouTube channel is considered a form of media. So right off the bat, there's no denying that Bob Ross is very successful at what he did. Now, it was a different time you need a lot more budget and people to do what he did. And that's actually the first thing that hits me is that how easy it is for us to do this today. The existence of internet really empowers fine artists like us to self-promote our work and classes. And that brings us to this big art versus marketing scene and Bob Ross as an IP and how Bob Ross Inc. profit off his image and name. Now, after watching the documentary, I am definitely very upset about the lengths Bob Ross Inc. goes to make as much profit as they can using Bob, and even more upset about how Bob's family didn't benefit from almost any of these. I cannot confirm everything in the documentary is true, but it's certainly very possible and I personally think this should be quite close to the truth. As a business, the bottom line is often the most important thing. And a lot of times, these businesses will do whatever they can to make more profit. Personally, I'm definitely someone who believes that a successful artist can and should thrive in business. I don't believe in the notion of a starving artist. Bob Ross is somebody who contributes a lot of value to many people. He shared a lot of joy and peace with many viewers across the world. So I do think he deserves a lot of the success. However, a lot of the issue presented in this documentary is caused by Bob Ross Inc., the company that owns him as an IP. People in the documentary, including Steve, Bob's son, shared that it was never Bob's vision to profit off the merchandise, our materials and such. And what's really upsetting is that Bob's own family wasn't able to benefit from his success. And for someone like me who really values family, this is unacceptable and immoral. Especially when they use Bob Ross' name as their company name and his face as their image. Again, I'm not going into detail about the whole thing. If you want to know more, check out the documentary. If you don't have Netflix, hopefully you can find a friend who does. But anyways, I feel like this can happen to any artist who doesn't have a total control over their own name and work. And especially in the time before the internet, if you want to start to do anything like what I'm doing right now, you need financial support. But now, if you want to start a YouTube channel and get yourself out into the public, you really don't need much to start. And that's not to say that it is really easy to grow and become successful. I definitely struggled for the past four to five years, and I still don't consider myself a successful artist or a YouTuber. But a good thing is that I have almost total control over my own art business. In other words, 
I can keep my vision and mission as an artist while growing my business. And because of my background as a digital artist and my experience with video production, I am able to do everything myself. Not to mention the equipment nowadays are more and more consumer friendly. You can have a professional quality or at least close to a professional quality video with a fraction of how much it used to cost. So it's a lot easier to get started and having control over your own name and image today because you don't have to rely as much on another company or gallery. Again, that's not to say what we have today doesn't have its own set of challenges, but I'm just thinking overall, artists nowadays have a lot more power and ownership of themselves. And for a fine artist, your name and image are just as important if not more than the artwork you produce. So back to the documentary, I think it is definitely a very good documentary, even though at the end it does get a little bit depressing. But as I said, I am not a diehard Bob Ross fan. The only Bob Ross thing I have is this Funko Pop figure that my friend got me. So it didn't really change how I feel about Bob Ross, but it definitely served as a good reminder to not forget about my core value as an artist and really protect what I set out to do as an artist. And that once again is to remind people that they are loved and accepted with my painting and content and hopefully bring some joy and peace in this crazy world we are in right now. Okay, so as a bonus, I'm going to share with you the process of this tiny Bob Ross painting that I did. The original painting is in oil, but since I don't have oil, I use watercolor. I actually haven't touched oil in a very, very long time since my college years. To me, oil painting is more toxic, Bob's health issue is probably related to that as well. So if you're working with oil, please be careful with the medium. I'm sure there's better and less toxic way to work with oil now, so please stay healthy. Okay, let's take a look at this painting. Okay, so let's take a look at this painting. And as you can see, this is a very, very small painting. I use the canvas size that I'm going to use to draw a box so that I can just paint within the boundary. So this painting is really just for fun because I want to paint a little painting to match the Funko Pop Bob Ross figure that my friend gave me. So I still approach this painting just like any other painting that I would. So I start with a very, very simple pencil line drawing just to get the overall position and the size of things. Spray a little bit of water on my palette, on my paint, and also clean my palette a little bit. And I started to mix the color for the sky. So I start off by using clean water to pre-wet the sky so I can get those soft cloud. Now in the oil paint, Bob Ross usually use a big brush and do the crisscross action to blend those paints so they get those nice, soft, white, fluffy cloud. But in watercolor, we do the blending by using the water instead of trying to hand blend those paint ourselves. So the first wash is the color of the light. Since I cannot paint light on dark in watercolor, I have to start with a light color. And since it's still wet, I paint reflection right off the bat so that we can have that nice soft blending. So the process of painting this in watercolor versus in oil is very, very different. So now I'm painting the background mountain. So I apologize for the camera shake because I have to zoom way in just to see the painting. So when you're zooming that in, any little bit of shake is going to look very obvious. So I'm using a small brush and really try to get that shadow of the mountain in. And I have a little bit of a damp brush to soften some of the edges. It is a very small painting, so I'm not going to bother with a lot of details in the mountain. And now I start to paint the middle ground grass that is darker than the background, so I can just paint over the background. So again, this is how small this is. I'm using the Trakel 
synthetic Kolinsky brush that I usually use for portrait when it comes to painting the features like eyes and lips and so on. So I'm using that because I need a smaller brush to get into those little areas. Doing some wet onto wet so I can have a little bit of variety in the greens. And now I'm mixing a much darker green for the pine trees. Now if you ever watch Bob Ross paint, he used a fan brush to get those textures of the tree in. Now I don't have a fan brush and it's not going to work the same. So I start with painting just the tree trunk and then I try to fill the leaves and the branches later on with the side of the brush. So it's a little bit similar but a little bit different and a little bit more spontaneous. But what's cool about the way Bob paint is that he's able to use the property of the brush. He's able to use the shape of the brush to assist him to get those shape that he wants. So while I can't copy him directly because I'm using a different medium, the same principle applies that we can always try to utilize the shape of our brush to achieve the certain effect and the brush stroke that will help us to create the visual language that we want. And now painting that foreground bush. You can use a slightly thicker paint. And now I'm going to re-wet the water area because I want to darken the reflection of those background trees. So re-wet it and I paint those reflections again, wet onto wet. Try to get some darkness in. So here we got the value that we are looking for. Now it is very small, but I think the overall shape and value is pretty similar to the original. Adding just a little bit more pink to the background and we are finished. It's a very fun little painting. It's actually the first time I ever paint something this small. So I cut out the painting and I glued it on the little canvas that I got. And I put it on the little easel to match my Funko Pop Bob Ross figure. Now I probably won't be buying any Bob Ross related merchandise knowing what I know right now. But I'm still keeping this since my friend gave it to me. If anything about Bob Ross that's really worth remembering is that he really shared the joy of painting. And that's something that I wish we all have when we are painting. Let go of the frustration and let go of the control, especially in watercolor. Just paint and enjoy the process. Hope you enjoyed that. I definitely had a lot of fun doing a miniature painting. I enjoy sharing my thought with you a lot and I hope you do too. Next week, I will be sharing another painting process. Then the following week, I will be revealing my video setup. I know many people are waiting for that. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon so you won't miss out on that. I am Eric from Coffee Watercolor. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. See you next time.